Hey everybody, it's me Bryson Booker and guess what? I'm back for another microphone review just for you. Now, from what I've been seeing on Facebook and uh, YouTube, you guys have really been liking these microphone reviews. And I like doing them, so I'm just going to keep them going. And uh, this is the last microphone that I have in my collection currently. And it's the Sennheiser E835. Now, I don't need to tell you guys this. You guys already know about my conversion story with Sennheiser. But just in case you don't, I just kind of let you in uh, on what it is. So pretty much, you know, for years and years and years and years, I've been using Shure microphones. Because, really, <laughs> that's all I had access to. Uh, I never really tried different microphones like Sennheiser. And then when I did hear them, I didn't like how they sounded. They, to me, they sounded really bright, and turns out that was just the engineer mixing them that way. But I didn't really like Sennheiser for the longest time until I got to school and started to use their MD-421-2 on vocals and on uh, guitars and things. And once I used that microphone, I just kind of fell in love with the articulation and just the natural sound that these mics have. These mics are going to make you sound like you with as little processing as possible. So what do I mean when I say processing? I mean the stuff that happens when a microphone goes through a PA system and me as the live sound engineer or you as a church volunteer or whoever is running the sound system have to apply EQ and compression and a de and all that fun stuff. Uh, I would say with Sennheiser, you don't have to do as much of it. Much uh, as mu You still have to do it, but not as much. As with other microphones uh, from the likes of Shure, where yes, they sound great, but they sound great uh, when you get them to the point where they need to be. And some techs don't know how to do that. You know, some church volunteers may not know how to do that. I obviously know how to do that. Uh, and you may know some other sound guys that most likely should know how to EQ an SM58 from Sure or a Beta 58 from Sure. But those of you who don't, I would say the least amount of work needs to be done to these awesome microphones from Sennheiser. And me as an engineer that knows how to do, you know, EQ and compression and stuff, to me, they sound the most natural. It sounds like the human voice. And I'll let you, I'll prove it to you as I let you hear it in the sound test. But this is the EA35. This is one of the basic Sennheiser models for $99 individually. Or, if you're a Sennheiser Fantic like myself, you can get the three pack. So here are three E835s. Obviously one is out of the case, but these two are in the case. And they came in this nice big box, and they're boxed individually like this. So this is what one mic comes in. And, you know, it's pretty simple. It gives you more information about the Evolution series. And just in case you didn't know, the E and E835 stands for Evolution. So it's the Sennheiser Evolution line. And it gives you more information about their microphones there. Also comes with a 10-year warranty. So just in case this great German engineering fails on you, you can easily replace the microphone. No problems. Um, but it's built so well, it's like, why would you replace it? Anyway, uh, it's it's great box. They came nicely packaged, and if you're a church and you're looking for you know three great microphones without spinning an arm and a leg, I would suggest getting the three pack of Sennheisers. Or if you're a Sure fan, you can pay ninety nine dollars for an SM fifty eight, which is not bad, you know, but you'll have to pay you know ninety nine dollars three or four times, however many SM fifty eights that you want, and it may be a little bit more, but for $249, you get three Sennheiser E835s plus the microphone clips and bags. And I definitely think that's a deal. I got it on Amazon. It didn't cost me an arm and a leg. I had a little money saved up. So I, I definitely took the plunge in the Sennheiser, and I'm so happy I did because they've been so worth it. And like I said, I'll let you hear what I've experienced so you can experience it too. But taking a closer look at the microphone... It's very hefty. It has a heft to it, which which is what I like. It doesn't feel cheap and light. Uh, nice grill right there. And you could probably tell that it looks different from other microphones. It has a light blue coloring to it, as well as a black grill. So it makes it look very unique from other microphones. 
which is good you know if you want your microphones to look a little different from others like if this is the pastor's microphone you definitely know that it's the pastor's microphone and you won't have to put tape on it because it's blue uh, but if you have obviously more of these then you'll probably have to put tape on them but if you want this microphone to be a special microphone it can definitely be a special microphone because it looks special and it sounds special too uh, the other thing I want to mention about these microphones before we go into a test is the pattern, the pickup pattern. A, this is a dynamic microphone, so in other words, in layman's terms, you don't need phantom power. It's not a condenser microphone. You can run it with your mixing board, no problem. The other thing I want to say is it's a con uh, cardioid microphone, so it has a cardioid pickup pattern. So what does that mean? That means it just picks up majorly in the front of the microphone, not really too much on the sides and not much at the bottom. It really just picks up in the front of the microphone. But the main difference, when I watch reviews about this microphone, I don't really hear people say this, but there is a difference. The main difference between this microphone's pickup pattern and something like the Shure SM58, this cardioid pattern is a bit more narrower. It's not as wide as a Shure SM58. So what does that mean? The Shure SM58's polar pattern, cardioid pattern, is like this. Sennheiser has a more narrow pattern. So that means you really have to be right up on this microphone to be heard. You can't stand from a distance like this. You can't hold it to the side like this. Or else it won't really pick you up. It really wants to isolate you and your voice to be clearly heard over everything else in the mix. So you have to be right up on it. Whereas with the Shure SM58, you can kind of move to the side a little bit. You can have it maybe an inch or two, two inches from your face, and you can still be heard pretty well. And, you know, it really depends on the kind of uh, microphone that you get and the kind of people that you have in your church. You know, if you obviously have a sound guy doing this, your sound guy will love these because it's going to make your musicians and singers sing right on the microphone. But if you're just working with volunteers, you know, your volunteers may push this microphone to kingdom come when somebody's holding it at their chest, but they still may not get the volume that they want because of the narrow pattern. Uh, in this instance, for churches especially, I would say the pattern of a Shure SM58 is more forgiving. Meaning that if somebody holds the microphone like this, or to their chest, or just four inches away from their face, they'll still be picked up pretty well. But I will say the fidelity will kind of go down a little bit. But that's, I think, the biggest difference between this, besides sound quality, of course, between this and the SM58 is the pattern. The pattern here is more narrow, and it makes you sing right on top of the microphone, whereas with the Shure, you can kind of, you know, be a little wobbly with the microphone, and it'll be picked up, but it won't be that good sounding. <laughs> you can't make it sound better if a person is singing four inches away from it. Whereas with this, they have no choice but to sing on it, and it's going to sound solid because their mouth is right on top of the microphone. Which for me, as a sound engineer, I really love. Because it allows, again, the nuances of the voice to come through so much better. And it, it's, it's just worth it. Feedback-wise, it's also worth it because it, obviously, yeah, as soon as you move on the side of the microphone, your voice disappears. When you move up off of the microphone, your voice disappears. So it's not going to try to pick up other stuff around it. It's just going to get you, which is what I enjoy. So that's the other major piece I wanted to bring out. Now we're going to go into the sound test where you can determine for yourself if this mic is great for you. I obviously love it. I love the articulation. I love the creaminess of it. It has kind of a creamy sound to it. Whereas with the Shure, you can kind of get more of a dry sound. Which, hey, you know, if you like it, it's okay. It's been a staple. The Shure SM58 has been a staple for almost 50 years. Everybody likes it. You know, and for some applications, you may want that. But for me personally, to get to what the voice really sounds like, I would definitely give it to the E835 in its natural warmth and just natural articulation. So I'll let you hear that for yourself right now. Okay, everybody, we are now testing the Sennheiser E835 with no processing. This is nothing. No EQ, no compression, no de on the microphone. It's just the mic itself. So that's what you're hearing, uh, the Sennheiser E835 by itself. I just kind of bumped my gain up just a little bit, just like a smidget. 
just so uh, the levels can be right. Uh, but here is the microphone. Again, you hear that creaminess I'm talking about. You hear that articulation I'm talking about. Uh, the only difference is I probably sound a bit more warmer because of the preamp I'm using. I'm using a Behringer UMC-22 for this test. I probably should have mentioned that before I did the test, but I'm using a Behringer UMC-22, which has a Midas microphone preamp uh, in it, and I love the Midas sound, so just a plug for Midas. Uh, but it has a Midas mic preamp, and it's going into the Harrison Mix Bus. So that's what I'm using as my DAW for this test. So it's literally mic to preamp to DAW. That's the signal flow here. And again, you can hear that richness. You can hear that creaminess. I'm right up on the microphone, by the way. So let's move an inch away. Check one, two. Check one, two. And uh, as you can hear, my voice dropped dramatically. Now you can only hear the top end. You can only hear the, the treble. And I'll go back even further. Check, 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 check. Hey, one, two, 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 two. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, check one, two. Now I'm back on the microphone. So, yeah, it drops dramatically when you move far away from it. But anyway, this is the Sennheiser EA35 with no processing. Now let's go to the SM58 with no processing. Okay, you are now listening to the Sure SM58. No processing, no EQ, no compression, no etc. There's nothing. Nothing but the microphone itself. So that's what you're hearing right now. Um, test one, two. Hey, check one, two. Mic check one, two on the SM58. The industry standard SM58 has been around since 1966, I believe. So yeah, this is a this is an old microphone, but people still love it. The Rolling Stones use it. Uh, m any artist you could think of probably started on it. <laughs> And probably still use it, you know, if they're an, an a legacy artist, they probably still use this microphone. Uh, but here's the sound that's been prominent on many live albums, many recordings, many live concerts for years. The SM58, no processing. And one more thing I want to do. So you'll hear what I say when I'm two inches away from the microphone. You can still hear my voice pretty well. When I'm three inches away from the microphone, it does die off a little bit. But now my mouth is not even on the microphone. Now I'm moving to the side of the microphone, the other side of the microphone. So it's a bit more forgiving in its pattern. It has a wider pickup pattern. Uh, so it's definitely more forgiving. Uh, but this is what it sounds like with no processing. All right, folks, this is the Sennheiser E835 with processing. Now here I added EQ, I added compression, and I added a de -esser. Uh, so this is the microphone around processing. Uh, so we got a whole bunch of stuff on this, but it still sounds pretty natural to me. That sounds pretty good for my voice. Obviously, you would probably EQ it a little bit differently for dis different voices. I'll tell you what I did to it. I just cut some of the low mids around 250 hertz, cut that out a little bit. Also cut out the treble just a smidget, just like a little smidget. And I kept the high mids at 3K the same. I didn't move those because they were perfectly fine for speech, uh, especially for my voice. I kind of need that, so I just kept it there. Uh, not much EQ work done, just little smidgets cut out, and I added compression and also a de which is set around 6K because these microphones, like most Sennheiser microphones, get a little sibilant, uh, so you have to at least have a de on them. Our, the other thing is to just turn the treble down a little bit. Uh, but this is uh, what it sounds like with everything on it. Here we go. And I'll do the same thing with the SM58. Now you are hearing the sure SM58 on my voice with processing. Everything has been done. EQ, compression, and DSing. This time I DS it around 4K, again, for my voice particularly. Uh, I kind of did the same thing EQ-wise as I did with the Sennheiser. Uh, I kept the high mids centered. I just got a little little bit of 250 carved out as well. At this time, I actually kept the treble centered too. This mic obviously doesn't have much of a problem with sib sibilance. Uh, 